Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to do a real quick crash course in Fishbowl API or SDK development. So we're going to get this real quick, uh, just showing you that my main method in my startup project in my solution is uh, just the main class going to my crash course class, which is a run method. That's it. So let's get started. So first things first, uh, we're going to add a reference to the Fishbowl SDK library that I have set up. Now this is my personal development environment and we're just gonna go ahead and add my release and that's it. We're done. First things first, what can we do? So class view, try the fastest thing to do. We do have documentation but this is a crash course. Whatever, we're faster than that. We can just take a look at the Fishbowl SDK and go for the Fishbowl object. There we go. And we've got a bunch of different methods that we've used, or I've kind of created over time. A little bit, bit disorganized, I gotta admit, but that's getting better every day. More people use it. Uh, we'll refactor things as things happen. Maybe in 2017 we'll redo this. Anyway, so first thing we're gonna do is just uh, instantiate the Fishbowl class uh, directly. So first things first, Fishbowl in Fishbowl SDK. We'll call this API. New Fishbowl. We're going to give it a host, localhost. We're going to give it a port of 28192. That's the Fishbowl port. Yeah, Fishbowl can be run on multiple ports. It's up to you to make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, in integrated application key. I get a lot of emails on this. Literally just make it up. There we go. Something that's uh, an integer. Uh, entered application name, crash course, and then uh, integrated application description, crash course. Now, in this application, we have some ability to do uh, automated logins, uh, re-logins, and things like that. Um, but persistence is uh, probably something you want to keep on. So go to true. Um, we're going to go ahead and lo now log in. API.login. And now if you fail at this, at this point, um, it's probably because you don't have uh, a fishbowl connection. You'll throw a, some kind of socket timeout error. That's up to you to catch. So we're going to log in with the username and password of admin, which is what the Fishbowl default database is. And at that point we should be done. So if we go ahead and click on run here, we should throw an exception because this is a new application. There we go. Fishbowl exception and that's what's going to happen. Close that. So uh, the fishbowl exception is going to be a uh, really basic information saying that you haven't, app haven't integrated the application or approved the application, so we'll wrap this in a try-catch. fix my misspellings. Not the most uh, consistent developer in the world. Oh, here we go. Sorry, let's try that again. Okay, official exception. Please approve of this application. So we'll go ahead and give it a pause while I start up Fishbowl Client. Okay, sorry about the pause. Uh, just had to get my Fishbowl reloaded and reconnected. Now we have Fishbowl client here. I'm not going to get into how to log into Fishbowl. Basically, once you're in, first thing you got to do is go to Setup, Company, Integrated Apps, and you have to accept any outside applications into a company. You can't just log in and start using it. Go ahead and approve. And now, when we go back to application, we can run it, log in and it's basically going to do nothing. right? So what can we do with the API? So once we've logged in, uh, we can actually take a look at something like uh, the login response, uh, debug, login response, and then login response we have module access, which is just a bunch of strings of what we can access. So we want to do debug, right line, Something like that.
and this is everything that the user can access. Cool. And then if we wanted to, let me load a sales order. Let me find a sales order number reference real quick. Let's take a look at Byte World, 50053. Perfect. We'll do a, instead of a login to see if we have module access, since we're log logging in as admin, we're going to load a sales order. So we're going to do API, get SO, 50053. And here I'm just going to do, uh, do a debug right line. And we're going to just break on that point. Go ahead and give that a run. Let it break. And within the sales order object, we can expand that. Let me scroll up a little more. We can expand that to see all the different object methods, uh, parameter uh, properties within the object. And we get items, we get the sales order item, expand that. We got all this nice, awesome data. And that's pretty much it. That's all I really wanted to show you that it's really possible to use my libraries and um, access the Fishbowl API. Um, there are many different ways to access the API. You can use the methods that we've got, or you can run uh, explicit uh, import and response calls directly uh, if you wanted to do something very low level with the API, or you can decide to send in your own XML and uh, get a response in XML from uh, the Fishbowl, and it's up to you to serialize and deserialize that uh, as you will. But that's all we're going to show you in this crash course is how to log in, get a sales order, write what kind of access you've got, and that's it. Uh, hopefully this inspires you to take a look at our API and our uh, libraries available for Fishable. Uh, uh, please uh, give us a shout. Thanks. Have a good day.